Coming up on Network Africa, South Sudan showing intolerance for crime has executed two soldiers for murdering a couple. And we focus on Libya's health system, which is quite worrisome, considering it has been embroiled in conflict since the death of Muammar Gaddafi. And then the UN Office on Drugs and Crime explains how it is helping Nigeria curb drug trafficking. Network Africa begins right now. Welcome. Thanks a lot for joining us on Network Africa. Let's begin with a review of major stories that happened over the weekend. 14 unidentified bodies with short wounds to the head have been found in the eastern Libyan city of Benghazi. United Nations Libya envoy Martin Koble says he is shocked and dismayed by the summary execution, labeling it a war crime and calling for those responsible to be brought to justice. The bodies were recovered from Laiti, a neighborhood the forces loyal to Eastern Commander Khalifa after, captured this year from a loose alliance of Islamists and other opponents. Military officials from after forces refused to comment, saying the incident was under investigation. Elsewhere, Ivory Coast's parliament voted overwhelmingly in favor of holding a referendum on a new constitution that would, among other measures, remove a controversial national clause that contributed to years of unrest and civil war. The president pledged during his campaign for re-election last year to scrap the clause which states presidential candidates must prove both their parents are natural-born Ivorians. They must also have never claimed citizenship of another country. The motion to hold a referendum was approved in the National Assembly and 233 votes in favor and six against. Six lawmakers abstained. The referendum is expected to be held in September or October ahead of the parliamentary elections later in the year. While in South Sudan, Vice President Rick Marsha has fired a minister who had said he defeated his longtime rival, President Salva Kiir's party, after a letter to a party member and his military commander saying he will be relieved of his position as mining minister. The rifts between the vice president and the minister had raised the prospects of further chaos after months of fighting as members of a faction led by the minister threatened to replace their leader. Two years of civil war that erupted after Kaya Sachs Mashes vice president in 2013 has killed more than 10,000 people and displaced over 2 million, many of whom fled to neighboring countries. There may be tension in the land in South Sudan, but it does appear it would not be a hindrance to maintaining law and order. The government has executed by firing squad two government soldiers convicted of murdering a couple. This would be the first time South Sudan will be executing anyone under the law. The soldiers were shot dead in front of a military parade in Wau Town, northwest of the country, in front of their relatives and residents. The soldiers were convicted following their arrest on July the 17th for murdering the couple in a residential area in Wau. A court in Uganda has dismissed a few charges against the country's main opposition leader, Kiza Bazije. The case dropped involved him disobeying lawful orders. It was opened against Bazije and his colleagues, including Kampala Lord Mayor Arias Lukwago, for holding a meeting in the city in May 2015 to allegedly discuss electoral reforms. The court said he disobeyed the Kampala South Metropolitan Police Commander's orders to disperse from the meeting venue. Bessige is currently on bail and there is no knowledge about whether treason charges against him will be dropped as well. Well, let's bring in legal practitioner Chukwemeka Eze, who joins us now on Network Africa. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you. Good evening. Help us understand what impact this dismissal will have on Mr. Bessiger's campaign and his determination to see President Yoweri Museveni eventually relinquish power. I think uh, the uh, political crisis in Uganda 
is quite unfortunate. It confirms the fear that Yoweri uh, Museveni uh, wants to remove the only opposition that he has in Uganda. This is a man that cannot be compromised. I mean, the Sigye, he cannot be compromised. And uh, he's, he knows Yoweri Museveni inside out. So Museveni is so much uncomfortable allowing him to be a free man. It will definitely impact negatively on the CGS campaign. It's going to more or less destroy his political platform. Because he'll be busy fighting for his freedom. And uh, we, everything about uh, his contest against, against Museveni will take the back seat. Well, he still has treasonable charges against him. What could happen to him now? Uh, the the counselor should be reporting every two weeks. The matter is still under investigation. It's, it seems that the, uh, the prosecutor has not concluded its investigation before dragging uh, Bersigue to court. And as you know, before he was released, he was in detention for two months. And uh, people see Bersigue as a political prisoner. It's not seen as one who has actually committed treason. And you recall that the allegation is based on a, a video video display where he was said to be sworn in as president of Uganda. So the investigation was not yet concluded before he was arrested and detained. So the court is still on the matter. And as time goes on, uh, Africans and Uganda. Uh, Ugandans will begin to see another piece of it. The one thing is sure that you very much have anyone to remain in power till he dies. Mm. And he will continue to tinker with the Constitution and torment any person in opposition who will be able to stand two to two with him. And that man for now is his adversary. So if all the charges are dropped or by some means removed, what could happen to Mr. Bessinger's political career? I don't think, uh, I don't think uh, the government is ready to drop those charges. I think the question should be if they are not proved, because the government is still taking the charges as they are, the, the court is still ready to listen to do the proof with respect to those charges. So if the CGA is convicted, definitely he will pay the supreme sacrifice. And then uh, Uganda, which I think Uganda has, uh, is, is not uh, adopting the death sentence. Uganda is life sentence is the highest sentence. Mm. That means he will go for life sentence. But if he, if he wins, the man will go back to the trenches. But I believe, and I sincerely think, that Yoweri Museveni will continue to put a clog in his political will, mm. so that the Sigye will, be, will, will remain a, in the dungeon throughout his tenure. We will frame him up if this one fails to succeed. He will still find occasion to frame him up again. But right now, it seems Bersij is the only main opposition against President Yoweri Museveni. What does yes. this say about the political situation, of course, which we do understand is quite volatile in that country? I mean, he's the only yes. one who is willing to stand publicly and go through the gruesome treatment he's gone through all this while in his country. What does this say? Yes. You know, the Uganda is, is made up mainly of poor people. Ugandans are much more interested in what they will eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, Museveni knows that, that the poor are much more interested in the economic affairs of the country. And uh, it's using that opportunity to clamp down on opposition so that people will see it as a elitist uh, uh, affair. But something is happening. You pay some of the people who printed T-shirts in favor of the Sigi have been arrested and put in, in right. detention. So it seems that uh, that Museveni is writing his right 
Last right. chapter in Uganda's political. All right, then. Thank okay. you so much, right. uh, Chikwemeka Eze, a legal practitioner, putting all of the happenings in Uganda politically in perspective for us in legal terms. Thank you. Let's take a break on Network Africa. When we come back, Libya's government struggles to maintain its health system amidst a falling economy. To stay with us for the latest on that story.